Well, it's the day before the big hunt, the last hunt of the year We're down here in New Mexico. I got my main man, Mike Davidson, behind the camera. You know, Mike and I get to hunt together once in a blue moon, and this year will be our second hunt. We seem to make beautiful music together, Mike and I, so we're looking forward to this hunt. Uh, it's the day before, we're just coming up here, glassing these giant big canyons. Um, there's quite a few tags in here, but uh, there's a lot of bulls too. So we're gonna glass this canyon behind us, see if we can turn something up, get us excited about opening morning. Let's see what he is. So we, we found a good ball, a good, good good six by six. We're trying to get some video of him through the scope. The sun's coming up, as you can see, and so there's a little bit of mirage. And the color's not great, but even from this far, it looks like he's a pretty good bull. The muzzleloader is such a great hunt to apply for because there's a, there's a lot more tags and more opportunity, you know? It's a little easier to draw, less applicants. So we put in for this, uh, for a handful of muzzleloader tags around the country every year, and a few years ago, I was lucky enough to draw a tag in New Mexico. Came down here, and, and Garrett and I hunted hard for five days, hard, and I miss the biggest bull of my life. You ready? Yeah. Anyway, after I missed that bull, it kind of changed my perspective on a lot of different things. And I actually wasn't going to apply for muzzleloader hunts after that. I was so dejected by it. Long story short, Mike kind of put his arm around me, said, hey, you know what? Let's build your gun. It doesn't kick so bad because I'm kind of a wimp when it comes to recoil. Let's do a few things, and we did, and here we go. And I drew a tag again two years later. Well, it's time to pack up for the morning. Looks like we found a, a bull worth chasing, going and looking at. And So the plan is maybe come back to this spot tonight. Glass is obviously a good spot. We can see a lot of country. And uh, maybe go shoot the muzzleloader a little bit. Just be sure we're ready to go 100% tomorrow morning. Beautiful weather, beautiful place. We love New Mexico. It's awesome being down here and we're looking forward to a good hunt. Decided to take midday, have a little lunch come down here and just always double check our zero. We've got some nice little spots here, some cliffs we're gonna shoot up at. Put a couple rounds through this muzzleloader, make sure she's dialed in, ready to go. Get in there. Oh, she's tight. Yeah. All right, we found this rock. It's a good flat rock to shoot at. It's a flat set up. It's about 600 yards. Um, it's about a minute and a half in the scope as far as the, di uh, the distance. So do the math on that. It's about a 10 inch rock. So definitely something I should be able to hit at this distance with not a lot of wind. We're gonna give it a try. Ready? Ready. Freaking hit right edge. Right edge. No wind, I guess, bro. Well, elevation looks pretty good. You know, we figured there's a little right to left here. Um, that, like I said, that rock's about 10 inches. I hit right here, so definitely a kill shot on an elk. And again, that's 600 yards. So a couple hundred yards should be a pretty good shot. Well, here we are behind the glass again. It seems like that's what you do a lot on these, uh, these hunts. Um, good glass always, always makes a big difference. Um, also knowing some good people does too. You know, we've been hunting with outfitters for, for years all around the world and, and we've got some really good ones down here in New Mexico that we trust and uh, sure like to uh, give them props anywhere we can, you know. Frontier Outfitting, those guys over there really know their stuff. They've taken really good care of us over the years and we're hoping we can add another trophy to the old uh, brag board there for them by the time this hunt's over. So we'll do our part. We got the muzzleloader that's gonna shoot well. We've got good mojo working for us. Hopefully it'll all come together. Well, here we are. First thing in the morning, we made our way into the bottom of this rim. 
We're gonna throw our packs on, throw our gear on, and head up this ridge. We got probably got about a mile and a half hike up to where we want to be. Guess we better get started. in the dark and all of a sudden we look over and there's two more guys hiking behind us about 40 yards. So we didn't even stop that last three quarters of a mile. We just basically ran up here. So I gotta see even I gotta load the smoke pole still. But it looks like he's just off this ledge so we're gonna hustle. in the thick trees. Those other hunters, as luck would have it, they popped right out on the cliff above him. It's so thick they probably can't see him, we're hoping. But as soon as he pops around this curve, we're gonna set up and try to take a shot. Could be 500, could be 600, we're not sure, but we may hear a gunshot here in a minute. Well, those guys up right above him, apparently they couldn't see him because they just threw their packs back on and walk that way. I don't know if they're coming back around to get a better view. <laughs> that was a close one. We know this bull's in here. We just gotta wait for him to come across. We think he's gonna come right back where we saw him yesterday. <sighs> awesome morning. This other bull's more impressive, to me anyway. That bull's probably, you know, we're thinking 340-ish. I think this bull's like 350, so we're gonna pass him. Hope that's the right thing. That was a gimme, wasn't it? 255 yards. Hope I'm not making a mistake, but I really think this bull's better. Let's grab our gear, hop over to the next rock. sitting on a rock for about 10 and a half hours now. We've eaten all our granola bars. We're kind of thinking that we need something a little better than that. So we're gonna go main course, five star. Mike's got the jet boil out. We're doing some ramen on the mountains. Check this out. I mean, we, this is living large. Beef packet. closing video of this elk across the canyon. It's kind of been a frustrating day to be honest with you. You know Mike and I are a couple of guys that like to go and run and gun and get it done and to sit on a rock for 10 and well 12, 12 hours now. It's really not our style but we had to give it a try. This, this elk never came out below us. Um, 
did see some cool stuff though. Saw five or six more bulls. And we actually saw a black bear running up there. So it's always good to be out in the outdoors. Always good to be out hunting. We may just be back up here tomorrow morning and see if by some chance he's going to be back out here feeding. But for now, it's pack up, regroup, day two tomorrow. So we're back at the top of this hill. We hear some other people over here. There's two other hunters up here. We gotta bust it up the top of this. Here goes Nuff. Try to keep up. Well, we made it to our spotty spot. We can see it on both sides. I can see a bull right there. Let's get set up right here. Glass to work. Well, we got to our spotty spot. It's so remote, the elk don't even know it's here. Ah, there's a few more up the canyon. We're gonna keep going higher. Ah, beautiful morning, sun's just coming up. Haven't seen the soul. Saw so, uh, four or five spikes, one five point. Nothing down here in the thick stuff that we saw the bigger bulls. Uh, a couple miles more up the straw, I saw probably the second best bull we've seen. Just caught a glimpse of him last night before dark. We're gonna go up and see if we can find him. So. so we're in a whole new area. We glassed this up uh, earlier this afternoon after we packed out of there. We're hunting these big open hillsides now, much lower, but it's, you know, miles long so we're just glassing these we got about an hour left of daylight see if something pops out clear on these ridges that's where those elk are way up high um, maybe something will pop out who knows we're gonna wrap it up for the night it's getting a little chilly again we saw two bears we saw really Kind of a cool looking bull on that skyline. We've got some good video of him. Straight line six by six. A couple of little kickers coming off his fours. Kind of a neat bull. And then we saw four or five right up on this ridge. Smaller raghorn bulls. There's a lot of elk in here, you know. It's just a matter of finding kind of the one we want that's in the right area. But it's uh, it's about time to put some meat in the pot. We're, we're about time to get serious and down to the nitty gritty. So we're gonna wrap it up for the night. Again, see what tomorrow brings. Still positive. Well, as you can see, it's dark, and here we are hiking again. Heading into a new area today on this big face. We're gonna try to skirt around this bottom, wait till the sun peaks up, and hopefully there are gonna be some bulls up here. We know there was last night, just a matter of finding a good one. in the exact same spot he just fed over the top. It's like 925 yards from here to that side. We're gonna have to go down and cross and get about four or 500 yards closer. Hopefully he just keeps feeding, but we probably got a motor. These bulls up here are too steep and too thick to get to. That's the bull we wanna shoot anyway. Okay, that furthest ridge over there, that's where we're headed. yards from right here to where he's at. We can get, that next ridge is 148 yards closer. If we can get there, I think we're gonna have a perfect shot. There's two bulls out now. Is there two? Yeah. As long as they're feeding, I think we can get over there in about five minutes.
Dumped him. He went down. Dumped him. Oh, good shot. Heck of a shot, man. Craigie. Out of luck, boys. That's a dead bull, man. He's dead, Craig. He's dead? Don't joke around, man. He was broadside by the time we got set up. He kind of put his head into those bushes, but I could see a perfect shot right into right behind his shoulder. His head was covered, but man, I thought this is as good as he's no gonna wind. get. No wind, perfect. Dial 575. Shoot, no dial was like 50, 563. Range is 575. <laughs> this is awesome. We are up here in the nastiest, nastiest part of this mountain, aren't we? Yeah. Hey, where you want him? <laughs> I think I was recording. And that was kind of, it went a little crazy there for a minute. I just ran up here. This was the only rock I could kind of get set up on. So those guys kind of stayed back and it was just kind of yard sale here to spread everything out range. But just a perfect, beautiful morning. No wind and, and hey, he came over right where he was last night and stood broadside for us. I'm glad we moved a little bit closer. We had him at 918, I think. Came closer, he was at 701. And came up here and he was 575, so. I'm glad we moved closer because this is this is the range I practice at. Obviously, we we feel pretty dialed in right here at this 600 yards and below. At least I do. But we made it happen. Thanks, bro. Thanks, man, for sticking it out this long. Cool. Well, Mike, practice at the range paid off, I guess, huh, buddy? Third animal with that smoke pole this year. Yeah, it is. She's lucky. She is lucky. Well, navigated the labyrinth of prickly pears, cactus, and sticky pointy sharp things, rock slides. I can just see some tan right there. Other side. It's exactly where we thought he'd be. Perfect. Let's go get him. Let's go get him. Right in the cactus. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Come around. <sighs> There he is. Boy, he did not go far. Yeah, he's straight downhill. Oh! <laughs> so we saw this bull on the skyline last night and we knew we had pretty good main beams. We're like, man, he's got a little something different when he finally stood up there. You could see he had these little inlines. That is so cool looking. Look at that. Definitely one of the better bulls we've seen this whole trip. He's got some mass up there, long beams. Yeah, he's awesome. Whipped out. And again, you know, we, we get to hunt all over. We feel really lucky to get to meet the people we do and you know we work with some of the best outfitters in the country and you know the true professionals out there and you know we're just lucky to have these awesome states that we can come hunt and, and good people to share it with and Cabela's tags. Yeah. Yeah, this actually was a permit that we drew um, with the help of Cabela's. Um, you know, they know all these outfitters and different people from around the country. A lot of them we've never met or don't know too much about and so 
we sure trust those guys and they've done a good job for us over the years. Um, it's been a banner year for me. I drew a mountain goat once in a lifetime off through Cabela's and Mike and I made the most of that and here we are finishing the year strong with this bull. Thanks Dave for everything man. You've been awesome. You've been great to work with and we sure couldn't have done it without you buddy. I had a good time man. I appreciate it. Oh yeah. Hey, here we go.